Dear Twin Flame souls out there, welcome to the Twin Flame Awakening Journey podcast and today is in episode 74. In today's episode we are going to talk about Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine. Who is the Divine Feminine on Twin Flame Journey and who is a Divine Masculine and why we have the Runner Chaser Dynamics and what it means in the whole universe, how when we balance our energies or we come to a union and why it is actually one of the most important part of this journey. You know when we hear that from everywhere that I am Divine Feminine, I am Divine Feminine, I am Divine Feminine and then my Divine Masculine run away, my Divine Masculine did this and my Divine Masculine that, that. Can I say something? while it's great that we get to label things on this journey, while it's great that we get some information out of something, because I know, I know how difficult it is when we first come to this journey and we try to make sense of the things that don't make sense to to us. But we also need to slow down a little bit with this labeling and same with Twin Flames. We are ticking the boxes, we are trying to constantly make sense of the things and all I'm going to say that you can, can make sense of the things is the energy. Focus on the energy, don't focus on labeling things, don't focus on pointing out things. We need to double down a little bit on the labeling, although I wish my vocabulary, I wish my way of explaining things could be better without labeling such as Twin Flames and also Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. I will still need to use them to explain you certain parts. And in today's episode, I'm going to walk you through a few things that are very important. Number one, who is, why? is on Twin Flame Journey we have Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. Who is Divine Feminine? Who is Divine Masculine? Why do we need these energies to be in balance? How do we have both of these energies inside of our body? And when they are out of balance, how our body tells us this and how our body lets us know and how it holds all the energy. And as a matter of fact, those of you who did our first workshop on Patreon, we had it almost two weeks ago. So on Sunday, now the new Sunday is coming up and we are exactly going to focus on discovering inside of your body what are the imbalances you are holding. And so those of you who would like to join the live workshop, it happens on this Sunday. We have two timing, timings this time. One is also for my Australian friends, and Asia and for Europeans it's the morning time those who would like to join it's will happen on this Sunday so if you are a patreon member patreon is five dollars and 99 cents a month and uh, you can join that anytime uh, and also leave anytime no uh, no need to stay there only thing is if you join and support on patreon this channel it helps me to put a lot of more time into content creation, into the research, finding answers, bringing you more, how do I say, maybe more peace, <laughs> hopefully, I don't know if you get any peace out of my of my channel, although sometimes I receive emails where you say that just listening to your podcast gave me some peace. So those of you who would like to do that, it's over there. You can you can come and join. So coming back to the... And also I'm going to discover about it. I'm going to talk about it. What happens as a man if you are so-called divine feminine? And what happens as a woman if you are so-called divine masculine and running and so on? And why is that happening? And why again... It's so important to balance these energies and understand the polarity, the law of polarity. What is the law of polarity? You know, we have all seen the battery. What battery has? 
plus minus plus minus and what happens when we try to when we don't when we put oh when we see the battery and we all have seen a battery i think <laughs> at least once in our lifetime and when we put two positives together what happens they push away when we put so we have to put together negative and positive and that's how our whole universe is actually created it's created on the polarity of positive and negative you know we have darkness and light we have so-called negative positive we have up and down we have um, right and left we have all of these different polarities that makes us as a whole you know you have your right side and you have your left side can you imagine if you are only on the right side and as a matter of fact in the human body it's the same thing our left side actually looks slightly different than our right side and these are all proven so nothing is the same even though it looks like the same so that's why it's with two flames we are the same soul it was split into two and and in order for us to come to the union to this feeling of the union where everything blends together both of you need to be in the divine essence that means for women to be in their divine feminine energy for men to be in their divine masculine energy and not in the wounded energy in the energy of let's say I'm gonna tell you who is a wounded divine feminine and that's that's something that is so important because we call ourselves divine feminine but divine feminine as an energy is never the one who chases divine feminine is never the one who's gonna lead take a leadership over and start saying that's how it's supposed to be that's what is going to happen i'm gonna talk about a little different for men who label themselves as a divine feminine although again i'm gonna say let's label ourselves more let's allow ourselves to say that i am on this journey i felt something and now i need to work on my energy to discover how to become the highest version of myself the highest possible version that i can be and i'm just gonna say for men it is to be in their masculine energy and for women it is to be in their feminine energy whether we like it or not and it's not fully here is again can become confusing it is a very confusing topic to talk about it i'm recording this a third time because it's very there are so many aspects on this what i mean when i say divine feminine energy more inside of a woman is that a woman lets by a feminine energy more and they liked what i read another day or i came across with is you know when you watch people dancing and at one point they dance so well that you don't really actually understand who is leading and who is following because it's all like blended into one but in order to blend this into one you need to have one who is leading it and the one who is following it but it looks like a all together the same thing so that's why when we come to this journey and we call ourselves divine feminine meanwhile we are wounded divine feminine divine feminine is not the one who is chasing but why is that happening it's because we need to heal that part we need to get to the place and it's not an arrogance again please do not mess up with an understanding of nowadays culture where the woman has to be like oh i will not go out with this man if that man doesn't have this and that because i know my 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 worth and this this is not a feminine energy <laughs> this is nothing to do like that feminine energy is the one that trusts has the knowing creates can nurture out of anything everything because as we know we females are the only ones 
who can give birth, who can create a life, who can be the portal for the life. And so we are the creators, but at the same time, Divine Masculine is a creator in that sense that if they are not in their masculine energy, or sorry, in their both masculine and feminine energy, they cannot create either. So we need inside of our body both energies to be in balance. So even though we like to call ourselves so badly Divine Feminine, I'm just going to say to you, you have both energies and you need to balance them. And so is your runner. They need to balance their masculine energy if your divine masculine happens to be a man. They need to balance their masculine energy. If your runner happens to be a woman, then they need to go back to their divine feminine and you, as a man maybe, need to go back to your divine masculine. Take a leadership action, start leading, start believing, start taking this into another level. Masculine energy is action-based energy. And as a matter of fact, how do we also know that we have wounded energy inside of us? It's our body. Our body tells us immediately. My body tells me very quickly when I have gone into my too much into my masculine energy, which is doing, creating, organizing, planning, finance, all of that. And then my feminine energy, which is like, I, I, I'm a photographer as well. And I love photography. I absolutely love, I love when I get to see people through the lens. It's something I, I, I enjoy the most, but I have the least time for that based on what I do in my life. And often when uh, I cannot get to create, I can feel how I'm craving. My soul is telling me, take the camera, go out there to make pictures, go, go. Because I need to nurture my creativity. I need to nurture something inside of me. And when I don't do that, what often happens, whether I fall sick, whether I need to slow down, that's why you didn't hear from me. And I guess you can hear a little bit that my sound, my voice is a little different because I lost my voice completely. And funny enough, it is from the left side. So that's again shows to me that I had last couple of months, I was more in my masculine energy. That's how it is. And it's very, very difficult for me. That's why I have my Reiki master. That's why I'm constantly working on this and I'm aware of it. Although life sometimes happens. And here's why I'm just going to say to all the men listeners who are men out there. Make sure you're going to be in the best masculine energy you can ever be in this life. Because if you are in your masculine energy. You're allowing a woman to be in the best feminine energy. And that energy that synergy is one of the most beautiful combos you can ever have and so if a man is listening to this and i know i have beautiful men in this audience i'm really really grateful for all of you it's time for you to step into your masculine energy but not a wounded masculine unfortunately internet is filled right now with the wounded masculine energies and wounded feminine energies. These two things are not the same. So let me just walk you through. And I'm, I know it's going to go long. So I'm just going to try to make it a little easier. Although I'm going to be very honest. I feel like it needs a, a full book with all the explanation. Because it's a very complex topic. But I'm just going to talk about... Uh, who is divine feminine as with some of the signs and some of the characteristics so-called what we have on it and when it happens when it's what it happens when it's wounded so just to give you an understanding that you might be most probably when you are on this journey some part of your feminine is lacking out of attention and your twin flame came to activate this for you whether it is that you need to create something, 
whether it is that you need to trust something more and do something, whether it is you start loving yourself and seeing who you are, really, start doing what you're supposed to, uh, that you start communicating with the universe, your spiritual um, connection is going to go stronger, and that's what's going to happen. Here is why you see all the numbers. You start to communicate with the universe. You start to communicate with the, with the world. And that can happen to a man as well. Why we have that some men are divine feminine is not because they are feminine men. It's because they had some kind of knowing from the very early on with spirituality or something connected with spirituality that when they came to this journey and they were the first ones who wake up was just because of that knowing they had before from their feminine energy side it doesn't mean that they are feminine men but it might mean that their masculinity is wounded and what i mean under also let you see i'm jumping from one thing to another because it's so complex to explain but what i mean is when we have a wounded masculine energy is for example, you don't take a leadership, you don't take a lead in your hand, you are afraid of uh, making changes, you are afraid of failure, for example. And here is again to come back to this why your divine masculine is running because they are afraid of failure, they are afraid that. They cannot keep up with this. So it's better to run away and not take action. What is a masculine? Masculine is the one who takes action. Masculine is the one who is leading. Masculine is the one that is going to protect and provide. But when they are lacking out of it, all they want to do in this moment is to hide and never come out of it. Or... They are stuck in their mind, that they are really in their ego. Can be also that they are very in the sense of selfish, that sense, that sense selfish, that you tell them that, listen, I think we are on this journey. I think this is happening. And they'll be like, no, this never is there. What is this thing? I don't believe in this. Believe me that the very masculine man who has a strong masculine energy and strong, not in a negative sense. I'm trying to get better words. Unfortunately, as you know, I'm not a native English speaker. And my my vocabulary can be a little here and there. Because it's kind of basic, I would say. So I don't have the best words. But masculine, who is in their best masculine energy, doesn't mean that they don't believe in spirituality. Or they don't believe in that connection. They do. They really do. But that means that they have to let go of their ego. Same is, for example, now if we talk about the wounded feminine. And here is just something I'd like to say that we become obsessive when we are in a wounded we can become very needy that we need that person next to me i need to do this i need to have that and i'm gonna say to you here it's not a negative thing the most important part of this is that you're realizing oh i'm doing these things that means my energy is out of balance and i need to fix these energies then also when we are wounded divine feminine we can be a little manipulative um, unfortunately, we see a lot on Divine, Fe uh, sorry, twi Twin Flame Journey, a lot of manipulative energies where people say to you, you need to do this, you need to do that. If you're not following my advice, this will never happen to you. Fortunately, this is a wounded feminine energy. Whoever is manipulating you are not in their feminine energy. Because feminine energy is trust and knowing. And letting it be as it is. For example, if you would you would give everything of you in order to know, let's say you have a plant and you're not going to tell to this plant, 
you know what, I'm going to put you to this corner, there is a lot of sunlight, you're going to grow there, that's how it's going to be, because I know, no, you're going to be like, okay, let me see what is happening to this plant, how can I nurture this plant better, how can I be there more, this is all our energy, a feminine energy is, is there to create space, a safe space, without any judgment, without any manipulation, without any, any, how do I say, my way or no way. Uh, also, a lot of women can hold, wounded feminine energies can hold perfectionism and jealousy or grudges towards other and being insecure about themselves, not speaking their own truth. Um, codependent and not afraid of being themselves a bit of a maybe victim mentality that this happened to me and that happened to me so just to say that why these things are important and I know it's very difficult to look into the mirror and be honest with ourselves it's the hardest thing to do because it's so easy to point fingers on others and say you see my runner run away because they are in their ego mind. Well, it takes two to dance a dango. And like in everything, we need to find the balance. And we need to let go of the energies that are holding you back of being, for example, the the one that is allowing this to happen. So if you are divine feminine, if you're a woman, you have to be more in your feminine energy. If you're a man, you have to be more in your masculine energy. But you need to balance them out both inside of you. And as we talked about before, about the polarity, and all, we talked about the fact that, you know, uh, the batteries. And as we know that there is the law of polarity, and why I want to just talk about this right now is that, you know, our universe is created by the opposite. Everything is positive, negative, up and down, day and night, light and darkness. Mm, it's always the opposites. And you know, like we all have heard the opposite attracts. But what it is also, and Isaac Newton has the love of motion. And I really, really like that. And just listen to this. When two bodies interact they apply forces to one another that are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Now, how do we, what are the so-called characteristics of killed feminine or the feminine who is in their best energy? One of the things is like intuitive communication. That you're starting to have this intuitive communication with your twin flame. I know we got the ones a comment in our um, in our YouTube channel that why don't you say anything to your twin flame? Why you need to speak in a five D? Well, the truth is that during this journey, you're going to learn another way of communication, and that's telepathy and intuitive understanding. And this is happening all the time. And now it is heightened because your twin flame came to your life to, to open this up for you. And so you start having this knowing and feelings that you know something without having a proof of it. That's why I say we cannot solve this journey over here with our mind. It simply will not work like that. Whether we like it or not, we don't solve this with our mind. Then it's the growth and creation, I would say, that one of the things that we divine feminines should do, and why is it important, is to start nurturing our own growth, of seeing what we are lacking out of, things that we could do in this life, but we are holding back based on fear, based on insecurity, based on perfectionism. All these things are holding you back of going into the full, full way of living. 
and I and I'm I'm gonna say this that we hear that perfectionism, you know, everything has to be perfect. Nothing is perfect. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Everything is as good as it's supposed to be on that time and place. We evolve in time, things change. But the same thing, the let's say the computers we have today were not perfect in the sense of when they first came out. But that was the beginning of something. That was the beginning of the creation. So you see, we need to let go of all of these limiting energies that are inside of our body. I will tell you about how you can know if you have these things inside of your body and how you can let go of them. And of course, what happens when we come to this journey is exactly the you start focusing on a personal growth, emotional healing, spiritual development. That's why you start reading the books. I'm so glad to hear many of you are saying to me when they have read uh, The Alchemist or The Power of Now. And I've added a couple of new books uh, here on the link in bio, which you can order. We definitely in our workshops will start focusing on reading together books, which means I give you two weeks to read a book. Why? Because the more we read, uh, the more we connect with like-minded people and energies and frequencies, uh, the more we heal and we let go. If you stay stuck of who you were from the moment you met your twin flame, you have a long way to go. And that's why, and I know many of you hear me saying this over and over and over again when I say about just distance yourself from tarot reading a little bit. It's not that I'm against it. I think it's great. I think sometimes we all need it. The only issue is if you don't take any action, if you don't start shifting your energy, this tarot reading is not going to do much for you. So that's why it's also like law of attraction. Why is it happening? Is because you start acting on it. You start understanding, oh, I need to take it. I need to start doing it. So pay attention of the books you read. Pay attention to podcasts you listen. Pay attention everything around you because that's going to nurture your energy. And also don't point fingers so much on others. Look more inside of you. And I'm going to say that spirituality is an ongoing process. I have a long way to go. I'm like a little mad scientist here at home right now, reading, taking notes, trying to make sense of the things, but not with my mind, but more with my soul of realizing we are in the beginning of something amazing. We're going to discover something way out of this world with this twin flame thing like for example channeling channeling is so important for me and it just shows to me how how our souls know everything and so coming back to the divine feminine is again that creativity and creation um another very very big thing is is being receptive which means that you are believing in the guidance sign and synchronicities from the universe and you just understand that these signs and things that are coming are steps to the path towards the union And I've spoken about this so many times on my podcast, why it's important to follow the signs, why it's important to understand them. And again, if you happen to be in a wounded feminine energy, you are afraid to speak your truth. You are afraid to show who you really are. So you are holding yourself in an inauthentic energy that is not you but it's so called easier to be there but once you get out of it and that's why I say why is it so important is you feel weak and if it's a wounded feminine energy but once you get out of there 
once you start expressing yourself, once you start knowing who you really are, the magic will start to happen. So these signs that you are receiving are not there to entertain you. They are telling you something. These books, um, I'm going to tell you a story. I, since I, like I said, I'm like a mad little scientist here and reading about everything. I, I don't know how many books I've read <laughs> within such a short period of time. I, I, uh, and then I had a funny thing. I was thinking about it and then a friend of mine came on the call, but that was a different call than a twin flame. And we were talking about something and she said to me, I went on a hypnosis uh, session and then there was like it was like a show actually hypnosis show and um, and you know he is able to put you in the hypnosis you're going to do certain things and you're going to do certain stuff and everything and i was like wow that's so interesting like because i know that let's say if i do channeling for others or overall doing a soul's channeling we always need to have a permission but hypnosis can happen that someone puts you under hypnosis pretty much you without knowing it. Although when I did a meditation, and I'm going more deep into that, so today's information is definitely very, very basic. But I realized, no, actually not everyone can put us into hypnosis when we don't allow. So, which means, let's say, because the hypnosis, the person who's going to put you under hypnosis needs you to take certain steps and needs you to do something in order for you to allow them to come there, in order to allow them to come to your subconscious. And so same is with channeling. You need to give a permission. Anybody who tells you that they can read your energies, outside energies, yes, they can read outside energies. We, we are not only inside of our body. That's why the aura comes from and everything. But anybody who wants to read your soul energy has to have a permission for that. And you are the only person who can give the permission for it. And since you are sharing the same soul energy with your twin, is able to channel the energy from there. Not always. And sometimes it's more difficult. It depends on many factors. So, but if I'm going to start now talking about many factors, we will sit here next uh, three hours and <laughs> or even more. But just to say to you that when you are starting to follow this, everything starts to make sense. So now again, think of your head for a moment. Am I following the signs? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Do I meditate? Do I connect? Do I journal? Do I keep an eye what is happening around me? Do I create? Do I trust myself? And now comes a very, one of the most, most important part. The divine feminine believes in divine timing. And that's it. And why I'm going to talk about divine timing. Divine timing is everything. And we humans, we want to go in between and we want to always change things and do things. But I'm going to tell you two things in this, actually three things. And just take this as with you of understanding how when you are in your divine feminine, not in a wounded, but in your divine feminine, you just know when the union will happen and how the union is going to be. You just will know. And there is no one else who will really tell you. Of course, someone can guide you there, but you will know. And I'm going to say another thing about the divine timing. You know, we humans, let's say a woman to get pregnant, a lot of things have to happen that in order to get a woman pregnant, Okay, yes, we have nowadays medicine in the sense of uh, we can, I think we have these sticks to see when you can preg get pregnant, we can track the things. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it is the divine timing. It is on that moment everything had to happen. Same with a baby, when the baby starts to come to this world. 
It is the divine timing. Yes, again, we humans like to go against the divine timing. But no one can tell you that, yes, your baby will be born on that 15th of May, uh, 2 o'clock that time. No, no one knows that. Of course, unfortunately, nowadays we are trying to uh, play with the science and take the babies before and plan them and induce them. And I don't know what we're trying to do this. Although the truth is, everything is down to divine timing. When I was pregnant, I was asking many times myself, like, how does this little human being one moment knows that now it's the time to come out? Why cannot stay any more longer or any less? Why chooses on that time to start coming up? And the third thing about divine timing is when we're going to pass out from, when we're going to leave the house, or leave the house, <laughs> the universe is the house, when we're going to leave the, our body, that's the same. We cannot really plan this, can we? Can we say that it's going to happen this day and that time and exactly this place? No. We humans, of course, we try to disrupt the natural, the laws of the universe. We are trying all the time. But we are still not succeeding on it. So that's why everything is energy. So I have a lot more to say about Divine Feminine. But these were just the basics to start going through. Now about Divine Masculine. When they run away from you, it's not that because they don't love you. And this is something really, really uh, stupid. <laughs> or I don't even know if the stupid is the right word. But this is something we are creating for ourselves to believe that they are running away. Often they are running away because it is so deep and so scary for them too. And now when they are not stable and secured in their energy, they want to run away. And that's why, because divine masculine energy is also when there is a stability and security, it allows things to grow, heal and express. But if a man, also, okay, like in that sense, can be a woman. But again, I'm going to say that there is a different thing then. But if a man is in a divine masculine energy and it's wounded, all they want to do is to run away not to feel, not to take responsibility, not to be honest with themselves that they are feeling something like this. So they are going away from it. They are trying to hide themselves. A masculine that is in their best energy, for example, is confident. They have an inner strength. They know that, yes, I deserve that. That's who I am. They are taking action. They go after what they want. They don't run away from what they want. They go after what they want. They are focus oriented. Of course, they are logical. So that's why to tell them, oh, you know, we are on this twin flame journey and that's why you should be with me and that's why is it happening, it will not work. So do not bury them with an understanding that yes, we are twin flames and that's how we're supposed to be together. It doesn't work for them. They are in a good support. They are taking a direction they need to go for. They have a clarity. They have boundaries. They have a courage, a discipline. So these things are very important to have an energy. But to have the union, to have the connection. So when a woman now, or not even a woman, let's say, I'm just going to tap on one more thing. If you are a man that is a divine feminine, that shows you need to start going towards these things that I just told you. You might have stronger understanding, nurturing, tenderness, kindness, and that's beautiful and every man should have it. But you need to now start building your confidence, your inner strength. And let's not get into an understanding that confidence is negative. We often see when we see 
a wounded, confident man who puts others down, who makes themselves feel more impinged. This is not this is not masculine energy. This is wounded energy. Masculine man would never put anybody down. Masculine man would lead everybody to their best possible way. Let's say even military. Your head of the military is not there to to so-called abuse their power. Is to bring out your power. Or take dominance or control over somebody. Of course, military is not the best example, but you understand my thing. They are a team. The the masculine man who is in their best masculine energy will never put anybody down. Never. They uplift others. They see the power in others. They they have that guidance. So that's why we see. And what happens when we come to this journey? We both see the best part of ourselves. Like I see the best of my twin flame and he sees the best of me. But we still in our mind, like for me, when my twin told me that, first of all, the first thing he said to me, he said, you should work much less. Why do you work so hard? Why do you keep working? You deserve to enjoy. You deserve to relax. And can you imagine what my mind was doing at that time? It was like, no, but I cannot. Who's going to take care of me? Again, a wounded feminine, a very wounded feminine. So much in my masculine of making sure that I take care of myself. But I'm in a wrong energy. Same for the man. If a man is too much in their feminine, it's beautiful. But the magic will start to happen when they find their confidence, when they find their focus. There is nothing, and I, I, I believe that every woman can agree here, whether twin flames or not twin flames or whatever. There is nothing more sexier or attractive when the man knows what they want, when the man is focused on their job or their mission or something that they do when a man takes a lead i think every woman who is listening to right now can say that but if it's wounded we try to run away from it and we are afraid of the men who are running away and i spoke this with my twin flame about many things i said you know that you could reach to so talking back to I said you know that you could do this in your life you could be this there's a possibility for you to do this but you need to take an action and he was so afraid of taking action for that and he was afraid of taking action to come after me as well so that shows it's a wounded masculine and often of course wounded masculine they either start drinking they either yeah exactly hide themselves so there are many many things what happens but i'm just gonna say now if you are a woman who is in a so-called divine masculine the runner energy you need to go back to your feminine energy and i told this before in the beginning of my podcast that why i'm not big fan of runner chaser here and this and that because at one point of this journey, we all shift. We all have a shift. I have been the runner the same way. I have been trying to get rid of this energy. I've been trying to get out of this. I never wanted to feel any of this. So I was like, okay, how to stop this? I'm already going to say to you, every one of you who is listening, you cannot stop this. You can try. And that's why the masculine who is running, they are trying to stop this all the time. They're doing things that are harming them instead of realizing I need to take this into my into my action. And men who are listening and are divine feminine who are chasing their divine uh, so-called masculine. Remember, you need to make a shift. You need to go back to your natural energy. That's how it is. Once you do that, believe me, like I said, There is nothing more beautiful than the woman in their uh, feminine energy. And there is nothing more beautiful than a man in their masculine energy. 
there can be the same sex couples, so women to women or men to men. I'm I'm gonna say I'm not an expert here, but I'm not saying that cannot happen. The only thing I'm gonna say is you can always see who carries one energy more than another. You always can see that, and when you see this, you understand that they might be lacking out of this dynamics something for themselves. And now I'm gonna come. I'm gonna say it was in that sense. It is a very brief and extremely confusing. I know that. <laughs> I'm totally aware of this. <laughs> it is so complex. I I have. If I look at my notes over here right now, I have um, seven pages of putting down. So it is a very complex one. But I want to talk to you just because it's for you. It's very rare that there is a divine masculine right now and listening to this and it's like, oh, this is what I have to do. For them to come to the term and understanding twin flames, this will take some time and allow them to take this time. You focus on your natural energy. So for women, focus on your feminine energy. For men, focus on your masculine energy. I promise you. It will make a change. Now when I spoke about that we have both energies inside of us. On this Sunday we're going to do another workshop. Where we're going to discover where do you have the pain points. Where do you have these energies inside of us. And I'm just going to talk through. Just today you can scan your body already. And you can join us on Sunday. The first workshop is available on Patreon. So you can do this because we started from the fears. We started to let go of the fears. Now we need to again see where we are holding ourselves back. I'm going to tell another thing. We will never solve this unity, this love, this connection with a mind. It, it doesn't work like that. It's just sitting and not taking action not connecting with your soul will not bring results. I don't want to be the harsh one here and I don't want to be the one who says that that you know it's never going to happen. But I also want you to connect with yourself faster that you are not on the loop this loop of hope, loop of, of feeling that looking at your phone and I know all of that. I know I've been all of in this place and I'm not here to judge you at all. This journey is going to make you the most amazing soul ever on planet uh, here on planet. So let's talk about it. I'm going to go on the left side. So for example, if you have a uh, let's say pain, if you press on your on your um, jaw you go into this of course i need you to have a video for that but that's for that come on sunday if you press on your jaw and you really press on the bottoms where is your ears and if you feel that there is a pain that means that there is a denial of you being you if your jaw is constantly like you're holding it in a tight pressure that's again, you're holding a lot of energy of you not being you, the denial. For example, and now it's again difficult. Uh, if you have a, you know, where is where have we have our collarbones and in between there is the air. If you start touching this, if you feel any pain there, if you feel anything, that is, for example, that you're holding yourself back or you can't express your love. When, for example, you have pain in your hands, upper hand can be that you are on your left hand, that you have fear of receiving from others or you have a wrist problems means that you have some early childhood traumas with females or when you have uh, uh, let's see what else can be here let me 
like on your solar plexus, right in the solar plexus, and that's the most common one for most probably. Uh, and both sides then is uh, so you know where our solar plexus is, and both of the sides. If you have a pain, both whether it's back or in front, it shows that uh, you are afraid of letting go of the control. And it's one of the hardest things for us to do, to let go of the control. So on Sunday, when I'm going to do the workshop, you can come and join and get to understand what are the things that you are holding inside of you that are not allowing you to be in your best feminine energy or for men in their best masculine energy. So these were the things I wanted to talk about it today to give a little bit of an overview to understand what is this divine feminine what is the divine masculine and why do we need both of this like I said in order to to be in a union both of these energies need to need to master you need to come to your natural state of energy but let's label ourselves a little bit less Let's listen to our body. Let's listen to our soul. Let's also see what our mind tells us and have all of this together. And that's where the magic will start to happen. So it's not, like I said, you are holding both of the energies and knowing them what is happening will give you the freedom. So, okay, I'm going to end up over here. One of the things I wanted to say is, again, you can join the Patreon. Like I said, that will keep this channel alive. Sorry that I I was a bit missing. I lost my voice, as you can tell. Uh, retreat is coming in November. And last time I received two new emails of uh, reserving their spot. So those who would like to come, please send me the email. And then you are on the list. I have so many things that I'm lacking behind such uh, as uh, uh, putting out the new information about the retreat and so on and so on. I'll try to get everything under control as soon as possible. And yeah, you can book a session with me. I also want to say that I have so many stories to share and tell. Thank you each one of you who have sent your stories to me. I'm going to do that on the next episode. I read a story and you can send yours to inflameawakeningjourney at gmail.com. I wanted to say one thing. This channel is not about me. This channel is about you and your growth and you becoming your higher self and coming to the union. So every single feedback, every single story, every single thing that has happened to you, feel free to share with me. I am more than happy to share this with an audience. This channel is about you. Even though, yes, I bring in a lot of my examples, I want this channel to be about you. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that and you are the best. You are the love and light. Those of you who would like to have a booking to inflameawakeningjourney.com, both channeling and consultation calls are available. You can simply book them and then we're going to discover whether you are on this journey, what your soul is telling me and so on and so on and so on. Anyways, lots of love and light and thank you so much for being here.